more important is that you're going to have stopwatch. And with only the stopwatch, you will be able to calculate exactly how high up this ball reaches and exactly how fast you threw it. Okay, so with only a stopwatch, so with only time, there's so much we know about a ball going up and coming back down that you'll be able to calculate a whole lot of stuff. Okay? So that's what we're shooting for. The idea, though, is so when a ball goes up and comes back down, right, and it kind of pop fly, does gravity ever turn off? No. No, right? There's going to be a point where we're going to get caught up on that concept sometimes. People will all of a sudden think that there's no gravity. But gravity's never going to turn off, right? Right. Okay. When this ball goes in the air, what do you think you know about the peak? At the highest point, what do you think, what can you say about anything going on at the peak? The, it is the least velocity. How much? Zero. It's zero. I want you to think about it. Ball goes up and comes back down, right? An instant before, so just exactly at that peak, the velocity will be zero. An instant before it was going up, so it had a positive velocity, okay? An instant after, it's going to be coming down, so it has a negative velocity. So the idea is if it had a positive at one point, a negative at another point, it's going to have to have a point where the velocity is zero. Now, people will get caught up and they'll think, okay, the velocity is zero, it's not moving at all, and that's true for a tiny fraction of a second, okay? But we always need to know that any time when anything is ever at the peak, when it's in the air, the velocity is zero. All right, so on this, we can say, at the peak, oh, no, maybe, oh, and that's really ugly. Let's try that again. At the velocity, at the peak, the velocity will always, always, always be zero. Okay, an instant before it's going up. An instant after it's going back down. So it's going to be ha there's going to have to be an instant in time where it's essentially not moving. Okay? This is a random question, but I in my my uh, I remember my or at my in-laws house, okay, they have like the little balcony like that looks down on the living room. So if you're upstairs, you're like, hey, uh, throw me something, throw me a, a towel if I'm, or whatever, for my kids, like if I'm giving them a bath up down, or at their house, I'll say, can you throw something up to me? And ever have something where somebody throws something up to you and it's really easy to catch? You know what I'm talking about? They throw it up to you and then it's right here and you just grab it pretty easily. Because the velocity is zero. If they throw it up to you and, it's, and the peak is right about where you are, it stops for a second. Okay, and at least even if you don't catch it at the incident zero, it's been slowing down, so it's going to have a very slow velocity going up or down, or it's stopped. So that's why it's always easiest to catch it right there. Okay. All right, now, what about that acceleration though? Again, does gravity ever turn off? No. Okay. But the problem is when people see that the velocity is zero at the peak. A lot of people then assume, well, it's stopped. There's no acceleration, and they say it's zero. Okay? So even though you all know that gravity doesn't ever turn off, when it comes down to me asking you what the acceleration is at the peak, there will still be students on the test that are going to say it's zero. All right, so I'm going to tell you right now. I guarantee there's a question. There are two questions on the, on the test coming up, which I don't know when it will be a couple weeks from now. Okay, one question will be, what's the velocity of the peak? And most of you will easily get that right and say it's zero. Okay? But then I'll have another question of what is the what is the acceleration at the peak? And unfortunately, a few of you will get it wrong and say that's zero also. Okay? So I'm just warning you now. If you want to write a note to yourself, put it on your yellow sheet, whatever you want to do. But remember, gravity never stops pulling. It is always, 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 always 9.8. Acceleration is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay?
And it's just, I'm just telling you, it's, it's one of those little brain parts that you get caught up on. So don't get caught up on it. Even though something stops for a split second in the air, gravity doesn't change. It's still negative 9.8. So anywhere, if you're given a chart like this, anytime we talk about a problem, you know right away. Okay, anytime you're given a worksheet on falling objects, before you even read the question, you can start writing your givens and say A equals negative 9.8, because you know it's always the case. All right? So anywhere where you see acceleration, it will never change. Okay? All right. Now, what if I give you time and you need to calculate velocity? There's going to be points. I'm going to give you a question like this on a test, okay? But there's going to be points where I say, well, what's the velocity at this point? What's the velocity at that point? Okay? If I throw something up with a velocity of 49, or whatever the velocity is going to be, so I'm going to say that's my initial velocity, VI. That means at any point, if I ever ask you for a velocity at any point on this path, you're going to use initial velocity to still be 49. Okay? But if I'm looking for what's my velocity after one second, and this is, this is definitely not drawn to scale, but what's my velocity after one second, it's still just using the big three. We're still doing the big three equations here. Okay? My initial velocity, so I have my list of givens. I have vi equals 49. Okay? I have acceleration equals negative 9.8. Okay? I have t equal 1. And I'm asking for vf. So as always, I'd ask myself the two, two questions to figure out which equation to use. One, do I see time on my list of givens? Do I see time on my list of givens? Yes. Yes. So the middle equation won't be used. Two, do I have xf slash d in my list of givens? No. No. So the big ugly won't be used, right? The only one left is the first one. All right. On your own, if you've got a calculator in front of you, if you don't, grab one. Um, go ahead and calculate after one second what the time would be. And Laura will lead the way where the calculators are. Thank you, Laura. Again, so remember, acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. When I, talk, when I teach my active physics kids, I would say, you know, you can think of an acceleration as, of that gravity as after every second, you're basically subtracting 9.8. Okay, so whatever your velocity is, whatever it is, the next second will be whatever it was before, and just subtract 9.8. And so this, you could do without actually doing the math, without doing the, the big three equations, right? You just say, oh, I'm going to subtract 9.8. 49 minus 9.8, you get 39.2. But obviously that gets harder when we have a time of like 1.5 seconds or something else. Um, so you realize we're still using the big three, okay? We're just saying acceleration is negative 9.8. We're still using the big three. All right. What about if we want to figure out the time at the peak? Okay, so if I need to figure out, let's say I need to figure out time now. I want to know, I throw the ball up with a certain velocity. How long does it take to go to the peak? Okay, so I'm still, I still have an initial velocity of 49. Whoops, 49. I still have my acceleration of negative 9.8. Okay. If I want to know what the block or what the time it takes to go to the peak is, what's another known? What's another given that I know now? Yeah. What is it? Zero. Zero. Right. Okay. So if I say the word peak, kind of like you see the word rest and stop. If you see the word peak, you can say, oh, I know velocity is zero. Okay. All right. Which equation are we going to use? Still the first one. It's still the same questions applied. I do see time on my list of givens, even though it's unknown. Okay? And I don't have xf slash d, so it's still the first equation. Are we okay with that? Okay. Go ahead and take a couple minutes now figure out how long does it take to reach the peak. Again, I just wanted to see, again, we're still doing the big three equations, but there's so much information we know. When something goes up, it comes back down because we know at the peak the velocity is going to be zero. 
Okay. Now also understand that everything is going to be symmetrical the whole way through. Okay. If I throw a ball up at 49 meters per second, when it comes back down to my hand, it will be going 49 meters per second down. Okay. The morbid example I have of this is when I, I remember the first time hearing about it was when after the first Gulf War, okay, Kuwait was invaded by the Iraqis. The Iraqis get pushed out. The Kuwaitis celebrate by shooting their guns up into the air. Okay, the problem is when those bullets come back down, they're going with the same exact velocity they went up with. Okay, so then people down miles away were getting killed by these stray bullets falling through roofs. Okay, now that's, it's not just in the Middle East. There's, there's always stories about in the U.S. Fourth of July, woo, I'm going to shoot my gun in the air. Okay, and then a few miles down the road, somebody's getting killed with a stray bullet. Okay, so I know that's a morbid example, but the idea is anything leaving, anything going up with a velocity, when it comes back down to that same height, it's going to have the same exact velocity but negative. Okay, so if this is 49 right here, at point E, what's the velocity going to be? Negative 49. Right, because we're going to say it's down now, so that would be negative. All right? At point D, what's the velocity going to be? If point D is the same height as point B, what's the velocity going to be? No, that's acceleration. Uh, point B, we said, point B, we said was 39.2. So it would be negative 39.2. Okay? But at any point... It's, everything's perfectly symmetrical. So something going up at a certain height, whatever the velocity is there, when it comes back down to that same exact height, it'll be the same exact velocity but negative. Okay? Um, what else do I need to say there? I think that's it. All right, moving on. Can I move on? All right, the other thing I just want to, again, say is, it's perfectly symmetrical, okay? So if something goes up and comes back down, if you know the total time, what you'll want to do is just split the trip in half, okay? When you go outside, hopefully next class, and you throw the ball up in the air, let's say that you calculate the total time in the air is 4.2 seconds. Okay? Well, then how long did it take to fall? 2.1, right? You just split the trip in half. Okay? So when we go outside, we time the ball going up and coming back down. What you want to do is just split the trip in half and either look at the trip going up or the trip going down. Okay? Because either way, that means I have more givens. If I look at the trip coming down, what's my initial velocity now? Yeah, I'll say it again. If I if I take the trip and, and I split it in half, so now my total time, my total time is 4.2 seconds. I know that the time it took to fall was 2.1. You okay with that? All right. And if I split the trip in half, what can I say my initial velocity is now? Zero. Zero. Right? So now I knew no new information. Okay? And that type of problem is going to get a lot easier. So anytime you see a problem that go, where something's going up and coming back down, immediately split the trip in half. Okay, and if you're given time, split the time in half. Okay? Then that problem is going to be a lot easier to work with. So when you want to figure out velocity for the lab, and you want to figure out how fast you threw the ball, you're going to split the, the total time in half. Okay, same with distance. When you want to, if I want to know how far, how high up it is, that's the same as saying how far down does it fall. So I'll split the, split the time in half and I'll be able to get that answer. Okay? Okay. Um, we're going to get the computers in the back. You can hop on those. All of them have the printer set up. Mr. Lamb, I'm, I'm going to get on, front, on, on those. I'm also going to print the worksheets out for you.